Welcome back to the 2018 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. And we're following the feature card of FPO. This is the second half of round one, back home. I'm Elaine King, the Disc Golf God, and I'm sitting here with Sarah Holcomb. We've been enjoying some of that front nine action, and now we're here on the back nine. We see Paige Beard just has pulled a little bit ahead, a couple strokes. I'm right behind her, cat's one off at one over par, and then we also see Sarah Lamberson on the card. Struggling a bit, but we'll see if she can pick it up here on the back. And it remains an overcast day, but the temperature is warming slightly, and overall have very good conditions for disc golf. Minus the mud. Cat leading us off here. So hold 10. This one is a hyzer around the left side. This one is a backhand hyzer. You want to have a gentle hyzer and you've got to get exactly the right shape of shot in order to land in the fairway. You know if I'm throwing a hyzer backhand, it takes a tough side on. <laughs> <laughs> I know that and you, you hit your, your mark in the middle of the fairway. And Paige up. throwing a mid to try to stay a little bit more straight rather than hyzering left into the woods, which is easy to do with a driver. And we see Sarah as well throwing a nice slow disc and landing beautifully in the middle of the fairway. This one is a monster if you don't quite get off the tee. So Kat is now uh, playing catch up already, but she put herself in great position for her next shot just then. And shot number two is straight. You just want it to go straight, straight, straight. Considering that, great shot. That was a great shot by Paige. Landed in the fairway. Sarah's a little blocked there on the left side because a couple big trees. She's trying to kind of get blocked to throw an Anheuser with a sidearm. No, I'm also opting the right. for the sidearm. No, fall left. Yeah, the right side <laughs> is really blocked. Yeah, you don't want to be over there. Well, that's I guess that's the name of this. That's really how this course plays uh, in all cases. Nice, and Kat was able to get around that tree and advances down the fairway. She'll be on the left side, though. Another sidearm on the edge of the fairway now from Sarah Lamberson. Now, at this point, it's still yeah. a little bit yeah. too far to get all the way there. Yeah. Of course, as I say that, um, Paige looked like she was just about to bomb it down close. there. <laughs> she was that, that tree she hit. She would have hit. If that tree wasn't there, she would have been parked. But that was, that's about 50 feet short of the pin. Sarah with three sidearms in a row here. But that one is in the short grass, or I guess the mud here. <laughs> uh, that was an early tree on my part. So I'm going to try to do that again here in a second. Cat with a beautiful out. Nice. And she's just short of that one leaning tree. And the basket is really only about five or ten feet behind that tree. Again, nice little roll. To put you, I am just in, I'm inside the circle. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Sarah also scoops up close to the basket. Paige kind of going for a big putt. A little blocked by that leaner tree on the green there. Yeah, that leaner tree makes the hole interesting, doesn't it? Cat is not interested in even putting at it because of that tree. Starting to dial in my putt a little bit here, finally, to save my par. Sarah Lamberson for her bogey. It's pretty much a drop-in for her at that point. <laughs> I think so. She doesn't take a lot of time. She has started. When I first met her, she took literally zero time. Um, and now, you know, these last couple of years, I see her taking a little bit of time to line up her shot. Got her a world champion. It certainly did. So here we go. Couple, it's a difficult hole, but we have uh, just two pars and two bogeys on to hole 11. Now, again, as you can see, the key on hole 11 is just... Put it the in the middle of the fairway with whatever disc you want to choose. You can use a mid-range, you can use a fairway driver. 
or perhaps a really beat up driver, but uh, he is to remain in the center. I found even missing a little left is much is more pref is preferable to missing right. There's kind of a, there's actually an alleyway about 280. If you can just throw straight 280 on a on a on a rope, you got a nice open turnover that's you know 40 or 50 feet wide versus the other sides of the fairway. You're shooting 10 foot gaps and 5 foot gaps. Yeah, and a hole 11 is an interesting hole in that. Um, no matter where you land, you're going to have a random assortment of trees between you and the basket for 200 to 250 feet, perhaps. And it's just a matter of being able to deal with what you're given. But there's plenty of room to get around all the trees. Just you have to pick the gap and you have to hit your gap, which you executed nicely there. And as you can see, Paige hit her gap. Page approaching with that with that little mid she always throws. I'm not sure what this that is, but it works really well for her. Sarah throwing the Anheuser. Yeah, that left side is seems to be so much more open. There is that big blocker tree this uh, Sarah just uh, hit. It is right on the edge of the circle, so she'll still have a look um, at that putt. Cat with a beautiful upshot. Oh, just. Almost got really in. nice stroke, though. Mm -hmm. And the rest of you have quite short putts for your three. Yeah, this is one of the more birdieable holes out there. The third or fourth easiest on the course, 500 feet par four. Um, but all those trees, you know, it's easy. It's easy to get that four. Um, uh, it's easy to get. It's easy to miss a shot and end up with a four. Four or a five. <laughs> yeah, what you want to do in hole 11 is get as much distance as possible, and then that makes slithering through the trees a little bit easier. So three birdies here, 40% of the field birdied the hole. And on to what I call the gauntlet, 12 and 13. But maybe it's just because I throw a side arm. <laughs> well, hole 12 uh, is another one of these holes you want to go straight for probably almost 300 feet, and then it takes an abrupt left turn for a couple hundred feet, and then the basket is actually slightly downhill in a rocky outcrop. So there's a lot going on in this hole, and your first shot you just want to throw straight to the spotter. So I got all the way down to the corner that you described, paid to an early tree, and then both Sarah and Kat are going to be left. So this, ga I mean, not only is this straight, but it is a tiny gap to throw straight at. So Paige is even opting for the hyzer rather than trying to hit the fairway there. Sarah places one nicely. Paige in her third shot, trying to get out to the open and around the corner just a little bit, which she does, but she is going to be blocked over there by the hundreds of little tiny skinny pencil sized trees. Yeah, down to the right there's a road and protecting the road is a line of forest that is uh, it's very hard to get out of once you're there. It's actually better to be up to the left in the trees and try to poke your way through. Sarah just can't catch a break here on this one. I'm throwing a flex with a flippy fairway and I make it through all the trees, give myself a putt for birdie. And there you can see there's that rocky outcropping that can make it very difficult to put your approach by the basket. Um, we've seen more than one roll on those rocks. Yeah, Sarah sticks hers in a good place. Yeah, those, those rock edges are really just unpredictable. Yeah, and Paige didn't have a whole lot of option there. She elected to try and power it through. And now she's sitting pretty. Cat with a nice approach. It is so dicey make, trying to make sure you land close to this basket. It really seems like you're always, you always end up either putting or dropping in. You rarely mm -hmm. can land it just like right next to the basket. Yeah, you don't want to be short of the basket. That's where all the big rocks are. You need to but then long of the basket, you have all those, you have all those rocks to roll the, the away into. The tiny ones, yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> like slightly left and deep is probably the flattest area to try to land. But good luck getting there. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, 
this certainly was a score separator on this hole. Because you could get any, I mean, it's possible to get a three. I don't know if anyone did, though. We have a couple of fours on our card and a couple of sixes. So it just um, shows if you get into trouble, it's hard to recover. Michelle Fraser did get that three. So 13, another anti-sidearm hole. You didn't do the backhand this time. <laughs> My backhand isn't that good. The gap is so tight. And it's downhill elevation and ga a tight gap. Yeah, is you can see it's very really downhill. Tough. And really, for a backhand, what you want to do is throw a disc straight and just let it fall left. Uh, Kat put a bit of hyzer on hers, and she's a little bit deep on the left, but that's certainly puttable. Oh, yeah, she's happy to be down there rather than up here by and all page, of these trees. Yeah, nice straight shot, and just have it fall a little bit left. Got a kind of a weird bounce back down uh, on the right side. see that Sarah's throwing a driver and just a little bit early but a good kick back to the middle that'll give her a better shot on the approach definitely don't want to be left and early left and early is kind of the death zone the pitch out zone and you can see those guardian trees again it's a matter of trying to judge how far those trees are and since it's a downhill it's very easy to overthrow it as Sarah did there that was right. Sorry. You have enough footage of me anyway. I don't know what she's saying, but she's got a smile, so. She had a smile on her face the entire time, despite some of the struggles she's so far um, had. So cat for her birdie putt. That was Paige's par putt. So close. Cleaning up, and man, this hole did play pretty hard. Um, nobody got the birdie today on a hole that, you know, is very birdieable, although tight. Takes quite a bit of precision and then some good putting on this green. There is OB up deep and right as well. I found that a couple times in practice. Yeah, the road, as you can see, off to the right of the basket does play OB. Uh, it's hard to get there without a, having a bad kick, but Side arming. <laughs> you can know. get there with a side arm. <laughs> yeah, you can get there with a side arm. Uh, so no birdies, but um, we have a tie for the lead here between me and Paige. Cat's only a couple back. And on to hole 14. Oh. Uh, the last par three of the course that we will see. So I think hole 14 is probably the most straightforward hole for the women. It is a absolutely straight shot. Uh, the fairway is generous, relatively speaking. And you can even hise her off a little bit and still be in the putting zone. Absolutely. We see Cat off to the left. I am off to the right. And Paige. Will she make it through? She's a little right and Ooh, maybe a little deep. Past. Oh, right at the camera guy. It's always good to aim for the camera guy. Yeah, right? He's always in a good place. Anderson overcooking it a little bit and kick to the left. I think what makes this hole easier as well is that there are very few trees within 40 feet of the basket. So it makes it a lot easier to have an approach shot if you kicked in early or to have a putt if you got most of the way down. Lambo to save her par. Another short, just short. Stroke's looking good. She'll find her stride here. Cat with a bag putt for par. She's feeling good <laughs> about those putts at least. Yeah. I don't know how she does that. I, I, I can't I can't putt with hardly anything going on. And the birdie oh, for Paige. That was a big putt. Yeah. That looked like it was outside the circle. Yeah, 35 maybe. And she was the only one to get this one today. Oops. Spoiler. Oh. Oops, Oops, fail. You're not I apologize. To tell us. Oh, you almost had that. Uh, well, I felt like I got it. But. And it's really surprising because this is a very straightforward hole. So the field maybe was feeling a little bit battered from <laughs> the rest of the, the course and just couldn't quite execute the 300 foot straight shot. 
Yeah, this course will leave you shell-shocked a bit. So great, great birdie from Paige, taking the lead. But we are all within striking distance here. And now we're moving on to hole 15. As you can see, hole 15 plays uphill. Thank you. And then it's a little bit squirrely to get to the basket. There are roots straight forward, and there are also roots if you go well to the left. And in fact, the short pin, sorry, the short tee is well to the left. So I like, to, I like to play the upper right side. I think you have a, like a, a more of a sidearm friendly approach to the pin. But if you can get far left, kind of where Cat is going, yeah. there's a nice straight shot to the pin. But you definitely have to get left pretty far to hit that gap. I kind of like the Lambo's approach here uh, of throwing yeah. it up the right with something straight. slightly <laughs> flippy to get it to go straight up that hill. a nice hyzer through there. There are quite a few trees though, so again, it's pick your gap. Um, if you're right in the middle, that seems to be the hardest place to approach the pin. It is. You have to be either absolutely straight up or way to the left. And Paige has given herself a chance for the three. Oh, there's a sidearm gap. That's the sidearm gap I was talking about. Ah myself a look for birdie. The cat had a beautiful shot, but she's right against the tree, but as you can see. But wow, no great problem. execution. And she probably wanted to be just a little bit more left to have a less obstructed um, approach shot, but man, she executed that well regardless. Sarah feeling it. Almost got it. Paige with a standard putt. World champ style. It was fun watching her win last year, last weekend. Oh, it sure was. And as you can see, she's very steady. She throws a lot of putters, a lot of mid ranges, in order to make sure that she stays straight and doesn't get off the fairway. And it's a great strategy, really working for her today. Was hole fourteen a tough hole for the field? Well, hole hole fifteen. Um, yeah, it was actually one of the easier holes, one of the easiest holes actually, 27% got the birdie and only 27% bogeyed it, so pretty fair spread. And okay. 16, not the most, not the easiest hole actually no. right here. Uh, Paige actually had a really nice shot uh, as well, you do, as you can see there are two fairways once you get through that initial keyhole, one to the left, one to the right. And you can choose either. If you get up to the right, it's a little bit wider. There's another left fairway. Yeah, that's a good kick. Look at Sarah. So three of us on that left side with a little bit of tree kick from Cat. And that kicks her over to the right side, which is actually, I mean, it's pretty good over there. There's a, a lot of space. She's very obstructed by that down tree, though. But that's actually a really good position. Lambo's going to opt for the straighter shot right at the pin. Heiser's a little bit, but mm. she'll have a relatively easy up and down. Thank you. And Paige had the farthest drive. And really good positioning. Getting to throw that mid she loves so much. And she'll have a putt for birdie. now with her third shot, fourth shot, fourth shot, parks it. I think there was a little metal hit there. I, there was a little metal action. Routine layup. Sarah just pitches her up, up. I don't think she wants to do any more putting. Close. The slightly uphill, Ed, there's so many rocks on the green. It's actually, I, here you can see I'm straddling because I have this big rock behind me. Oops, another right side miss, as was characteristic earlier in the day. You see this chair Lambo has? She, yes. She made a call out to the, the disc golf community because she didn't want to bring her chair on the plane. And uh, yeah, this is made out of wood. Handmade seat. Pretty cool. 
that's one of the more unique stools that I've ever seen, but it's really beautiful. Uh, whoever made it uh, lacquered wood, and so it's just gorgeous. A little bit weatherproof that way, too. Exactly. Well, you don't want your stool, if it's made of wood, you don't want those wood legs getting wet, and then it's really heavy. Oh, right. And it could probably um, change the integrity of the wood. I would think so. All right, so that was a, that's a pretty tough hole. It plays as the fifth difficult hole, a couple bogeys, Paige pulls away one more stroke. So now we're coming to the toughest hole on the entire course, hole 17. Paige has a great start by again just throwing a slow shot to put her in the center. Yeah, this one is really three, for me, it's three fairway mashes and then a turkey approach and probably yeah. a putt. And sometimes it's four fairway mashes if you don't get your full flight out of your disc. Seems like the right side's a little bit more open off the tee here. You have a little bit of a lane that's larger if you can either go straight or slight right. And believe it or not, folks, this is a wider fairway than it used to be. You could see that big tree stump there. That tree was cut down in response to player feedback that it was just a little bit too tight and a little bit random. And so there's been a couple trees that have been taken out of this hole, making it play a little bit easier, but it is still a monster of a hole. Lambeau putting her third shot relatively close to the middle. Paige throwing her favorite little mid there. I guess I should figure out what mid that is if she throws <laughs> it so often. And with two shots, Paige is out of that initial tunnel of the trees and now she's at a place where you can have a little bit more room to, to throw and as well Cat is out of the woods so to speak. She had to hit a really tiny gap to get there. She threw that beautifully. And so three of you are at the mouth. Lambo with the fourth shot. And the left side is good. There's a nice tunnel down the left side. Yeah, I think there's really a central tunnel, a left side tunnel, and a, a little bit of a right side tunnel. You kind of choose your own adventure, which gaps you like the best. I think the middle one is definitely the biggest hole, though, to approach. Yeah, and again, the there's been trees removed from the middle to create that. It used to be that you'd have to go around left exactly the way uh, that that shot was flying. Through the hyzer got caught up a little bit in some trees. Turned over a bit, but definitely in position to get up and down from there. Lambo cho choosing the big gap, which happens to be far right. And she made, you know, she got more distance straight at, you know, ahead without hitting early trees by taking that route. Ooh. Paige Ooh. almost threw it in right there. She almost did, and she had a very friendly tree that prevented the disc from sailing by 40 feet, which it looked like maybe it was going to. This elevated green is blocked by several different little trees. I felt lucky to get through all of them. Yeah, you definitely want to approach that green from the right rather than the left. It's a lot more open. But it's a beautiful picturesque finish to the hole and in a way I wish this was hole 18 because it's right? so iconic. Yeah and the beautiful steps a lot of hard work um, into this green. I always go up the steps because oh, yes. someone or s many someone's worked pretty hard to get those steps in. Cat with a nice putt for bogey which honestly this is like it pretty much plays as a par six. I mean on all my best drives I'm not really giving much myself much of a birdie putt. Now I got a five on it that first round but I through five perfect shots. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, this definitely played as the hardest hole, averaging 6.2, so, you know, 1.2 points over par. That's, I mean, yeah, I call it a par six. <laughs> That's allowed, right? I think it <laughs> plays a par six for the women, certainly. And that's 17 holes. And how are we looking coming into the last hole? Paige in the lead has in world camp style, but I'm only a couple back and then Kat's just right off that. So hole 18, placement, uh, distance placement off the tees. Straight uh, to slightly right. Yeah, I don't think you'll get into any problem going straight. 
just like That's every kind other of hole. a broken record out <laughs> here. Know. Once you get past that road and past that tree in the middle, it definitely opens up for a left to right approach to the green. Yeah, right where the cameraman is standing is a fantastic place to be. And from there, it's actually a yeah. fairly simple up and down 200 feet. Shot. She's gonna love that place. Oh, look at that roll. How about she knows what she needs that. I think course, she deserved that. You know, Whoa. trees giveth and they taketh, but I like it. You know, she got some giveth there. <laughs> she got given there. That's good. I'll be 20 feet or so for the birdie putt. Paid. Oh, so Taking a little gap. I mean, once you're too far right, you definitely are a little bit blocked. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I prefer the left if I would have to choose because you can get through the trees on the left, whereas the right, it's a difficult to shape that shot. Lambo with her second shot. Mm. Getting another kick off into the woods. This course can be like that, you know, when you just barely miss your shot, it seems like you get some of the worst kicks rather than if you miss it by a um, larger margin. Well, it's certainly if you were ever so slightly off your line, you tend to kick into the fairway, and if you're a little bit farther off your line, you tend to kick away from the fairway. So it's, it's very tough. You know, when, if you're not on your line, it's just one of those courses that is excruciating. And a good putt to finish from Sarah. Mando cans her final putt. Good, a solid round of putting there Excellent. on the last hole. Yes, and um, the play the hole actually played as a one of the relatively the easier the easier holes on the course. Um, but that was really because very few, nobody bogeyed it, and there was only two birdies. So it's a, it's a pretty, I mean, a good, it's a definitely a scoring hole to finish on, that's for sure. And that's a wrap for the back nine for the FPA lead card in the 2018 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Paige Bjorkis with the lead at a minus three. I'm right behind her at two. We have Kristen Tatar, which we didn't see on this card at even. And I'm the disc golf guy, and I've oh, caught up with our first point. round leader and world champion, oh, Paige Bjorkis. <laughs> Paige, you come to a national tour just like five days after be being crowned a world champion. <laughs> and then the very first hole, birdie, picking up <laughs> right off of the world champs. How's that feel? Amazing. Super exciting. So we go from like, a place like Fox Run Meadows, wide open, yeah. some OB to find, to every tree in Delaware, I think is right, right. here in this park. <laughs> What's your game plan? Um, avoid all the trees, right? <laughs> find the spaces in between the trees. Now that's what Elaine told me after. <laughs> when we were warming up, she's like, don't think about the trees, think about the spaces. Um, but my, get, my game plan is just stay on the fairways. I don't need to throw far to get pars, luckily. Um, so I threw a lot of putters off the tee or like a slower fairway just to stay clean. There was a par five out there that you went putter, 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 putter. putter. Yeah. <laughs> and you took the four on a par five throwing all putter. Yeah, that was pretty fun. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I would say Just so. Stay it in the fairways. It's, it's super, super clutch on a hole like that. So. You were also telling us, as we'll see a, a replay of it, you were telling me about your step putt. You feel like that's uh, really, you've gotten comfortable with it recently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, was there something that clicked or just some kind of form or technique for you? Um, I think just the form and technique and just practicing it because coming into the season, I didn't really practice outside the circle putt. So I'm not gonna, you know, go from if I haven't been practicing, but I took some time and kind of, I watched like Paige and Lisa kind of do a step putt and best putters in the world, right? Both Lisa and Paige. So um, I, I kind of mimicked them and started to do it and it just it felt good and it felt super clean. And even when I was missing, um, I got enough loft under them to where I had an easy comebacker. So when you have, when you have the confidence to make the comebackers, it makes going forward a lot easier. So can I just assume that after a great opening round here, you're not changing anything up for tomorrow for this round number two? Absolutely not. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Paige Beer because she's your leader. She's your world champ coming after a national tour win. You kind of skipped getting one of those, right, didn't you? I did. So now she's maybe trying to go <laughs> after one of those after the Worlds. Paige Beer we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.